So the outdoors has finally come to an end. You can see this beach puree here. Days are getting colder. I'm getting a lot of rain. So, you know, we do have our fair share of bud rot. Had a few caterpillars. We did use some Monterey BT, which seemed to knock them out quite a bit. But here's that bag seed mama. Really big colas. Definitely turn colors. We did have a damaged top here, but we just have to uh, go through and pick out the ugly stuff and we're gonna do a bud wash too. So give you a little recipe and show you a couple steps. So they've definitely turned colors, using up all the nutrients that's stored up getting colder out here's some of the one of the clones from that mother bag seed you know they have very thick colas you know we did have some troublesome spots on some of these you know you can see in there where we got a little mold there isn't a whole lot you can do but Growing more plants gives you the opportunity to harvest more. You know, you can see right here. But, you know, we did really good. Better than we expected. Colored out nice. I let the pots dry out. I didn't continue watering them. We had some rain the other night. And here's a clear cut example of some bud rot. So, you know. sad some of these tops but peach puree has got some nice dense buds but she's gotten some bud rot herself here and there especially this top that's sad so we're gonna have to salvage what we can but it's always good to have as many plants as you can manage so you still have a decent harvest after having to deal with issues like this. So this bag seed, it was very dense and it's the perfect home for caterpillars. So, you know, you gotta peel things apart. You're gonna have to take this arduous task of looking for stuff that doesn't belong there. But that's why we're gonna do a bud wash and hopefully we can uh, clean up a lot more and salvage a decent harvest. So after I uh, trim out all the bad shit, we're gonna do our wash. And this is for a two gallon mix recipe uh, I found on the internet. You could probably use less, but I seen 32 ounces of hydrogen peroxide with two gallons of water for the first initial wash that peroxide will help neutralize and kill the mold and things like that. And then for the second is baking soda and lemon juice. That'll help with the disinfecting and helping get rid of other contaminants. And third, we'll do a final water rinse. And I'll just put aside what I've been trimming here. And they will have to dry out. So I did get this herb drying net so this was fairly cheap it was under 20 bucks on amazon i got it with the zippers so we'll have that out here let them get some dry time before everything goes inside so let's get to it all right so it's taken quite a few days to go through the process you know you can see we still have got some clones left 
we've got plants that were pretty well harvested down there but what I did want to touch on is the bud washing process now I'm using three separate containers for this process the first container is roughly full of two gallons of water make sure it's not ice cold and I put in a 32 ounce bottle of 3% hydrogen peroxide so you just put your flour in there this one has actually dried for a couple days but I need to get it washed and I'd rather do it outside so we can hang dry everything and I like a nice sunny day nice breeze so you submerge your flour in here you can agitate it a bit do what you need to do just don't bang it off the sides you don't want to uh, knock off the trichomes and that goes for the same with the cold water that will cause them to get brittle and fall off but this is the first stage where it's going to eliminate the spread of the mold spores or any type of uh, powdery mildew so this will neutralize that and also help uh, loosen up anything foreign contaminants help get them off but you know you will see you know hairs in here you'll see other things we didn't do too bad with caterpillars I did use Monterey BT to pretty knock them down from the first sightings but you know these big flowers these big colas are made up of multiple big nodule buds so a lot of places for everything to hide and spread and fester so you get that going for a couple few minutes and then you go into another bath this is the second stage lemon water and baking soda so same amount of water two two and a half gallons mix it all up and this helps clean everything this is the natural cleaner this is going to help really clean off the, the trichomes and anything else that may have gotten missed so you know you can see a flying ant in there that's already in there you know if you don't get something in the first stage it's a good chance you get it in the second stage so it's good to clean it so we don't ingest any of the foreign contaminants that are settling on your plant through the whole season so after you've got them through the second step with the lemon water and the baking soda just let that drip off and then I go to a fresh water bucket uh, you can use any type of container as long as you can submerge the flour but this right here will help rinse off anything that's left and after this, she'll be good to hang dry. So I'll let her go in there. Put this big one. Now this is from the, the bag seed, the mother that made the clones, or that we took the clones from. So if you're using a bucket, don't jam the bottom, don't jam the sides. And I like the fresh watered final rinse in a bucket. You get a good submersion, and you can see the uh, plant material really gets to spread out and help release anything else that's trapped in there. And that's about it. So after you get through that stage, you want to hang dry them and let as much water drip off. Let them hang outside if you're outside for a couple hours or so. Nice sunny day with a breeze. I do have a makeshift clothesline over here. You can see between two bird feeder shepherd poles, do what you can do, but it works. And after they're sufficiently dry over there, you can also speed up the process with a leaf blower or wet and dry vac. And then after that, I'm putting everything in hanging dry nets right now. So we've got quite a bit in here already from the uh, clones and this one right here is just all the CBD so we've kept those separate we're letting them dry in the garage hang dry in the nets so nothing can get to them it's working out well 
So essentially, I'm going through the plants beforehand. When I cut off each branch, I go through each cola and the buds and you know, I take out any bud rot that I see. I pinch it, pull it out, and I close trim any of it that so it's not there. You know, some of these plants have been out here a little longer. I mean, you can see the top of the bud here. It's going a little shitty. And you can see the fuzzies. You can see the mold, the little spores. So it's good to pick out, cut out whatever you can, and then take whatever you salvaged and you start the cleaning process. So this three-step process is what I went with. I've seen some people just do two-step process. But either way, whatever you may miss or not see, the uh, hydrogen peroxide will fizzle up on some areas. If you take a look, you'll be able to see it actually attacking any type of mold or mildew. So this is definitely something to consider. There's nothing to worry about with washing your plants in water. After all, they're outside and it, they do get rained on. And that rain hits your plants for long periods of time. And it's a lot more forceful than dunking them in some water. So I highly advise thinking about it. Shouldn't be nothing to worry about. Just as long as you have the right conditions for drying so you can prevent any type of mold. So. And that's it. Just continue the process. And hang them up when you're done. So those first two you see here, I got them hung on the line. You can see they're dripping. I give them a vigorous shake before we put them on the line and get off any water and just let the residual drip dry. And then you can come out with whatever you have to help facilitate a better airflow, whether you got fans or a leaf blower, but nothing too forceful. And that's it. And then when it's dry, you hang it up or maybe put it in some nets like I got going on until it gets to the point where you can really do a final trim and then you can put it in storage for curing. So this is one of the peach puree plants left. I was pretty much trying to tackle all the largest buds and you can see here these girls of all turn colors. I did have to water them but you know they had a lot of strange fox tailing growth just may be the genetics because I really don't think they were stressed. They did very well, better than what I expected. But you now you got shit like this, you just gotta go through and get rid of it. So if you see it on your plant, you're never gonna get it all by picking it out and it definitely helps to have a, a washing regimen. All right, so here you can see all sorts of shit floating on the water from the first bath with the hydrogen peroxide. Now there's all sorts of stuff on there. There's dirt, you know, there's a lot of old dried up hairs. You, know, you can see a fly, all sorts of stuff. So instead of dunking your plants or your flowers continuously in it, I put a piece of screen in there and to help pull it out. And here. You can see all the shit stuck to it. It's easier with two hands, but you stick the screen in there. Just scoop shit up and get it out of there. And this is why you grow more plants because this waste right here could have easily been an entire plant. But we're going to get rid of it. Not deemed for human consumption. We'll throw it in the campfire. So over the course of the past week, we've been harvesting, trimming, washing, and drying 
at all different stages. And here we have everything in these nets here is from the bag seed and clones. They're all drying at various stages. These nets definitely work out. I just don't really care for heavy buds that lay on their sides. They kind of get matted, but I make sure I flip them every day, inspect them for any type of mold or anything going on. And here is our first container of material that's ready to be uh, finish trimmed and stored for curing. So everything here is from bag seeds or the clones. And you know, we didn't know what strain this was. It was very fluffy and foxtaily. And you know, I doubt it the plant was stressed to cause that. And I doubt it was the light source because we're dealing with the sun. It's just probably some shitty genetics. So it's pretty fluffy. But this batch here looks really nice. And here's some of the high CBD peach puree. Everything here is much more dense. Uh, you squeeze it, it's a lot darker. You see the really rusty orange hairs. Um, there's quite a bit there. Not as much as we hoped for. And I still have some on a plant on the top side. And I'm letting that go a little bit more. Here's everything that we've harvested from and trimmed and this was the last clone and it was pretty ragged and dry and fried so yeah I just left that where it was but I did get one seed off of that clone so that was interesting and here you know we just cut them down left a little here just interested in seeing uh, the changes in the much more colder weather that's why I left some buds on here. Just want to see if the colder weather and everything and the temperatures were really forcing it to produce more resin. And some of them do seem a bit more stickier. And one of the peach puree plants, I just left a bunch of these little popcorn nuggets everywhere. And just looking to see, you know, what else happens. I got some nice colors coming out. I could have probably had the plants out longer, but you know, all the moisture, additional, you know, humidity and rain that we've had really did take its toll. You know, as you can see, stuff like this, you know, it just gets all rotten. But you know, we can't get too picky. We did get quite a bit. And we have our hands full with some trimming. Uh, this is one of the better successful outdoor grows, but it should only get better from here. We already have changes that we're going to make for next time, additions to the soil and different feeding regimen. So it should be interesting come springtime. Of course, we're gonna get everything started in a tent, get it all ready, bring it outside for a good head start like we did this time. All right, so we're going to finish up the video here, but what we're looking at is some of the clone clones that were grown outside from the bag seed. And, you know, it looks pretty good, smells great, definitely an odd structure to it, pretty fluffy, spongy. Uh, it's going to be really hard to trim. Uh, that's why it's taking so long. Here's the rest of the plants. Uh, they've all been dried at different stages. I had to dry everything outdoors in the nets. But, um, yeah, they just need to be uh, finished trimmed and clipped off the branches. Over here is the uh, peach puree from outside. We've got probably roughly around 5 ounces here. I didn't really trim it perfect because we are planning on making some Rick Simpson oil out of this. So, yeah, smells great. Curing up nicely. And here is the first CBD plant, the peach puree, that was grown indoors. This was grown in that two-gallon fabric pot. Uh, next week, say around Halloween, it'll be one-month cure, and she's really come along great. Smell is awesome. Has shrunk quite a bit, but definitely a nice plant. But, you know, i like to thank everybody for being patient for this video. I apologize. had some personal things to tend to. 
But yeah, we're going to make quite a bit of oil. We're going to cure up some things, save for the winter time. And of course, we've already got some things going on in the background there, which we will get to in the next video. Um, definitely some interesting developments. But other than that, I'd like to really say thank you to everybody that subscribed. Uh, all the new subscribers, old subscribers, everyone that's sticking along with me and following me along my growing journey. I'm not trying to teach you anything. I'm just here showing my experiences and making these video vlogs, not only for my record keeping, but also hopefully other people can learn along the way from my mistakes and you'll make less of your own. All right, peace. See you in the next video very shortly.